Hi guys, it's Jill, and welcome back to the Jet Real Podcast, episode number two during COVID. <laughs> um, so, this week, I think I want to elaborate a little bit on last week's episode. Um, it seemed to be a topic that hit home for a lot of people, and um, I kind of just want to talk about it some more. Um, you know, after I posted it, I was kind of like, mm, didn't really say everything that I wanted to say, so I think we're just gonna, we're gonna try, try for that this episode okay so let's rock and roll uh grab your truly or white claw if you're of age and a basic white girl like me because i will be drinking a truly during this episode because it has been a long day okay and uh if not grab your pony go for a walk go for a a hack if you are able or clean your house do something productive clean your car i've done all of those things and i've run out of things to do now so (laughs) Uh, all right let's jump into it Alrighty guys, so welcome back, welcome back. I hope you're all comfortable and or situated with your headphones or phone in your bra. I don't know how everybody does their things, but that's how I do my things usually when I'm listening to a podcast. Uh, Pop into good old AirPods and uh, rock and roll. Um, But yeah, so this week's episode, um, I don't know. I have some some news. <laughs> Things evolved very quickly from last week's episode, wherein I mentioned that there is a potential for a new dude. And you know what I did? I took that potential and I squished it. <laughs> um, it sucks. It really does. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, there's that. Um, and there's just some things that I want to talk about. Um, you know, my experience with moving on and, like, getting into new things and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I kind of just, I don't know how many different ways I can say that. I just want to free flow and talk to you guys about what's been going on. Again, I enjoyed the style of last week's episode. It felt a lot more casual to me, probably because I recorded it at, like, 4 a.m. Um, but just, like, having a conversation with a buddy, you know? Um, I'm going to take a sip of my Truly. I hate that I don't have a co-host because if I did, then they could talk while I take sips, but instead I just have to announce. So hold. Anyway, um, so yeah, so last week, if you didn't listen to the episode, I recommend listening to that one before because I am very scatterbrained and all over the place. So, um, it is highly likely that I will be covering things in this episode that I did not in the last episode. Um, but... What I wanted to talk about is just relationship things. It's it's a hard doggy dog world out there, you know? Um, so in the last episode, I talked about, uh, I kind of like reviewed all of my past relationships and how all of those things went and probably was too candid, probably didn't need to say everything that I said, but you know what? I said, fork it, let's do it. Um, so yeah, the things that have been happening since, um, yeah, I tried, tried to thing with a new new human that I talk to an awful lot and if you follow my Twitter <clears throat> you know <laughs> because I do be I do be tweeting some some vague infos uh, relevant to my romantic life on there um, that's Jet with theory <laughs> on Twitter if you'd like to follow it um, but yeah I don't know I just um, thought that would go better than it did did not uh, <laughs> so um, sometimes you just don't Like, you think things are going so well, and then they don't. And that is a reality that we have to face. Um, I think that it's really, really easy to get caught up in um, a bunch of, like, ideas and shoulds and what you want. And if you get rejected or if you um, just don't end up liking someone the way you thought you did, which is what happened to me, um, then you have to deal with rejecting them, and that responsibility is so heavy like it sucks um so without disclosing too many things um this individual that I really liked uh we'll call him I think I called him did I call him Adam it was either Alan or Adam I don't know I just watched Tiger King so I might be a little messed up on the Alan um fuck that show by the way um (laughs) sorry for that but that I nope no thank you um 
but I think I called him Adam. So without divulging too many personal informations, essentially I really thought that I was into him and really, really liked him. Um, but I just, all of a sudden just like wasn't feeling it anymore. And, um, I don't know what that is due to. And by God, I wish I did because I have been dealing with text messages all day long of trying to let Mr. Adam down gently. Um, so like nothing in particular set me off. I just like, don't, didn't really, just don't really feel it anymore, you know? And I don't know what, what changed, what happened. Um, or if it got too close and it got too real and then I was like, ah, ha, ha, I'm out. Uh, I don't know how to handle vulnerability anymore. And I can make jokes about that, but I also am a psychology student and am a person who goes to therapy regularly, which <laughs> it's freaking lit that I can't do that during quarantine. Um, but, um, as a person who tries to be quote unquote woke, um, I, if I were to take a look at myself, I would say that it is likely due to the fact that I had a really hard time, um, coming out of my last relationship, and, um, now we have some pretty sick defense mechanisms in place, um, that when people get close to us, uh, I shut them out, and I don't feel anything, and then I panic, and, um, I feel really trapped and scared, and, uh, don't want to do it anymore, and I'm just like, nope, 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 and, um, I have felt that way before, um, not so much to quite the extent that I did with Mr. Adam, but, um, it, <laughs> that's a thing that happens. Um, but I also feel like, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just, I suck at this, but like, if I, if I really, really, really liked him, I would, I think I would be able to push through it and be there all the way, but I just don't think I'm ready and I don't necessarily think that he's the right one. So that comes back to the like ready ready for what ready from what um so in the last episode you guys know that I talked about um my relationship with Kyle I got so many tweets and dms about Kyle and that made me so fucking happy like everybody was just like yo I I feel you we all know a Kyle and um then even one person dm'd me and was like yo I broke up with my own Kyle because of that episode and that was like that just that's so powerful to me because I really do think that sharing stories makes all the difference like and understanding where people are coming from people that have been through it and if you can recognize and relate on such a level then it's like a because I know um I don't know if my followers would have any crossover but there's this youtuber named Jacqueline Glenn that I used to watch a lot um a few years ago and I still watch her on occasion, but I'm just not super into her stuff anymore. But she had a podcast there for a little while that I listened to. And um, I actually stopped listening to it because I, they, it's a relationship advice podcast. And uh, they would talk about, um, you know, just bad relationships and uh, toxic ones and how to help people in them. And I was just like, ah, ah, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> it felt like they were attacking me. And I was like, no, nah, I can't listen to it. Um, so I definitely understand that there's some discomfort in, uh, listening to your story be told from somebody else who's like, yeah, it sucks and it doesn't work. Um, and speaking of which, that reminds me, I just watched, um, he's just not that into you. It's a movie. It's on Netflix. Uh, 10 out of 10 movie, by the way, but the whole like premise of the movie is you're not the exception. You're the rule. And Oof, my dude, that hurts so bad to hear. I was like, holy shit, you're kind of right. Uh, because, you know, we all go into relationships. Like, the entire premise of the movie was everyone goes into relationships thinking, I'm going to change this guy. He's going to be different for me. Um, all his past relationships haven't worked, or he's never said I love you to anyone. Um, hey, dude, no. Um, hold, have to have to say I'll call you back in a moment. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm too lazy to cut this. Um, yeah, so, you know, you think that you're the exception, uh, and that, you know, they've done all of these amazing special things for you. Um, but, like, here's the deal, dude. Uh, rarely ever are people just gonna do a 180 or be the people that, um, you know, you want them to be when they're not. I don't know if that makes any damn sense at all. I'm so sorry, but like, it's so hard to explain. I just, I feel like 
we as women, you know, the whole premise of that stupid movie was so good. Like that you just, your whole life you're taught that boys, when they're mean to you or they act like they don't like you, it's because they like you. And not to say that, or that's not to say that we grow up thinking that boys who aren't into us are into us, but we do like a little bit of a chase a lot of the time. And also if you're a type A organize fixy person, problem solver like I am, then you end up in situations where you try to fix people and uh, want to, you know, help them. Um, because I'm also a compassionate and empathetic individual. I want to make people feel better and I want to help them. And if I can see the solution to a problem, I'm like, here, do this. <laughs> and that's not always the right answer. And also people don't always want to change. And that is a super important thing that I've learned um, through all of this. I guess I'm probably going to end up calling this podcast Lessons I've Learned or something to that effect. Um, you know, it. I don't know. It's just, I think that um, you can't force people into loving you, which is something that I tried to do very hard with Kyle. Um, I, you know, he told me so many times he kept breaking up with me and I kept convincing him to come back because I thought I was doing the right thing fighting for our relationship when in reality like yeah no <laughs> like I think we're too young to have a relationship where you have to fight for it like we don't have kids and a house and finances together and if things are rocky um it's a little bit easier to be like yeah maybe we're just too different or whatever but like you know at this juncture it's kind of like like yes you should like be there for people when things are rough, but if they're explicitly saying, I don't know and or I don't think I want to be with you or I don't see a future with you, which was the most common one that I got, which was pretty lit, um, take that. It's really, really hard to accept. Um, I just watched uh, Dr. Kirk Honda, who does the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I just watched him talk about the Love is Blind series um, on Netflix, on his YouTube channel, and I highly recommend watching those if you guys are going through something, because he's just, like, I don't necessarily agree with everything that he says, but 90% of it, I'm like, whoa, you're really intelligent, um, and he makes a lot of good points about, like, you know, when we get rejected, um, the easiest thing to do is say, you're just not, you know, willing to love me, you're not seeing it correctly, Um, you're putting a wall up or you're doing this because of past things instead of just accepting the person just doesn't want to be with you, you know, and that is so hard to accept. I couldn't for a year and a half. I got broken up with over, I think seven times. I legitimately lost count. That's a solid estimate though. (laughs) Like it was every three months like clockwork and, um, it was just so predictable and ridiculous and, um, by the end of it, I was just so emotionally drained and lost and, um, disheartened. It just adjectives on adjectives. <laughs> um, it was just a really, really hard time in my life because I was clinging to something that, um, was running away from me. And, um, that's, and I've learned since then, it's not because I am defective or I'm not worthy of love or I don't deserve, you know, to feel, all the things that, you know, you dream about, but instead it's because that individual, not mature, and probably just wasn't that into me, you know? I mean, (laughs) that's okay. And, um, another movie that I've been watching, um, or I just watched was The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I saw it when I was younger, but I just watched it again, and, um, you know, (laughs) Logan Lerman's character, he's like, why do good people go for bad people? And Paul Rudd's character is like, um, we accept the love we think we deserve. And that's a really famous quote from that movie and or book. And, um, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, and that's what concerns me for my future is because I don't, I don't know what love I think I deserve. And, um, that's why this most recent one, um, you know, the guy, Adam, so, so genuine, so nice, so kind, so willing to be open and vulnerable and put himself on the line. And like, I just literally could not have been a nicer, more caring, involved, communicative, intellectual human. And I felt nothing. So like, (laughs) what's the problem? It's me. And like, obviously there could be some issues like just 
lack of attraction, lack of, you know, general chemistry. Maybe it's platonic instead of romantic. Maybe I'm not there yet. And I'm not saying, like, it's me that I have, like, a problem that, like, I'm doing intentionally. But it's an issue that I've noticed is kind of a common thread. And I, it's gotten to the point where I can't tell if I'm meeting the wrong people or if I'm, I have an inhibitor if that makes sense. Um, so we're just going to make this the dissect Jill podcast. <laughs> um, but essentially I just, I don't know if I'm ready for that again. So after this one, um, you know, after I get done doing damage control because, oh my God, he's so sad and that breaks my heart and I hate my life a little bit. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of getting to a place where I'm really good and content with myself. Um, and am able to put energy into a relationship because um, if I'm honest lately, the times that I've been getting into relationships is because I'm lonely and or because I'm bored, not because I'm like, I feel like I'm ready or it's something that I really want in my life. Um, honestly, without it, my life is pretty full. Like I have work, I have, um, you know, school and my horse and the things that I want to do, like create art and read and, um, you know, just relax (laughs) outside of all of the work. Um, so, I mean, my life is pretty good without, you know, anybody else in it right now. And that's something that took me a very long time to realize and not only realize, but like actually feel, um, cause there for a while, it just, I felt like I was in a void. I felt like I could not feel anything and I didn't want to do anything. And, um, that is really scary and disheartening. And, you know, I talked a lot about that in my other episodes about depression. Um, but it, it's just, it's something you got to go through to get to the good times. Um, I think it was a podcast done by Little Pistol Annie, um, or Mosey Truitt. Um, I guess I could use her human name, not her Instagram handle. Um, it's the In the Spirit of Horse podcast. I forget who the guest was, but they talked about like creative cycles and, I think beyond creative cycles, it's just a life cycle. Like, I think you have to go through some lows and some bad times in an effort to not only appreciate, but, like, have good times. Like, I think sometimes um, you just have to reset and uh, recalibrate a little bit with some downtime, even some, like, sad and or off time, because then you start to, um, when you feel better, you can recognize it and appreciate it and embrace it, and then it makes it so much better. Um So, all that to say that um, I currently feel like I really hurt somebody and that really sucks Um, because, you know, I don't know how many of you have had to reject somebody that you actually care about um, because I really do care about Adam and I feel bad because he's such a dope dude and, like, on paper looks incredible, but it's the it, the, the love, the feeling... It's just not there, and I don't know how to make it there. I don't know if I have a problem with intimacy or vulnerability or if it's just I don't work with him. I don't know. So that's something that's going to be fun to trial and error figure out. Um, But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's a new thing to have to deal with, and it sucks really bad. Um, But... uh, yeah, I it just it, it hurts really bad to have to reject somebody that you care about because not only are you losing a potential partner, but you're losing somebody that you've built a really solid friendship with and um it hurts. It do. It do be it do be hurting a little bit. <laughs> um you know, it just it sucks so bad because that's the last person you want to hurt. And but you have to be honest because you cannot lead them on because you're not selfish and also you know how this goes and also you know that you're not going to develop feelings for them and also you know that you've been put through this before you know for me personally um Kyle told me several times that he didn't see a future with me and uh wanted to break up with me for my own good and I talked him into staying because I am muy persuasive <laughs> so um which in hindsight, I shouldn't have done. I, I just wanted him however I could get him. But, um, in hindsight, I should have been like, I respect that. Thank you for being honest with me and trying to do what's best. Um, I definitely do want somebody who is in it with me a hundred percent like I am with them. And that's what I'm trying to do currently for Adam, but he is not, he's not taking it well. (laughs) Cause what happens when you reject people 
is they want an answer. And um, you, it's people don't take, I'm not ready, or I don't know what the problem is very well. They start picking apart things that they've done and things that I've done and um, try to find an event that happened that's controllable, that's fixable, because then that gives them control and certainty over the situation and they know what to fix next time. But sometimes it's more ambivalent than that. Sometimes it's not an exact answer. Rarely is it ever, actually. Because, I mean, how many times have you guys ever been in a relationship or talking to somebody and they've done, like, one one isolated event and you're like, well, that's it. No more. Um, it has to be pretty bad for that to happen. Um, so if nothing extremely bad has happened, it's very hard for people to comprehend because it hurts a lot more to be told that they just don't want to be with you, you know, than anything else. And, um, you know, I remember when I was dating Kyle, I was like, God, I wish he would just have cheated on me so I could hate him and then it would be over, but he hasn't done anything. All he's saying is he just doesn't know. And I can't be mad because I get that. And, um, that was very frustrating for me. And, um, then I found out that he did. So (laughs) it's fine. Now we hate him, but not for real. (laughs) Anyway, um, it really do be like that sometimes, but also, um, I think I've grown up a lot since the Kyle relationship because like I went through so many, so many stages in that relationship. I mean, I was absolutely infatuated, head over heels, so in love with this guy, wanted to spend all my time talking to him, with him, et cetera, et cetera. Then we broke up and, um, you know, I was distraught for 30 minutes and then we got back together and then we broke up again. And then I was distraught, not eating and, uh, sick, lying on my couch, crying for a week straight. I wish I were kidding. And, um, then, I, we got back together and then we broke up for a month and, uh, then all the times after that got very blurry, but that month was very hard for me because I was more depressed than I'd ever been in my life. It was very hard to be sad. I just didn't feel anything at all. And to some extent, that's kind of how I feel now. It kind of like not so depressed, um, but just like shut off from everything and the ability to feel and, mm. Sorry, had a hangnail. Had to get that. Now my finger's going to bleed horribly. Um, anyway. Um, so, it just... Oh my, I, I keep getting very sad text messages. And I don't know what to do, so we're going to take another drink. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, it just... It sucks. It's sad. And, um, you know, getting broken up with hurts really bad. But if I have any lessons from Jill to tell you guys about being broken up with. Um, I think that some of the really important hallmarks are, um, to listen to the person when they're explaining why they've broken up with you. Listen. Um, sometimes there is a reason that they don't want to say because they know they're going to hurt you. Um, so if they're not giving an exact reason, like, you're ugly or your hair is stupid or you smell bad or something like that. If they're not saying like those things sound so trivial, but sometimes it's a deal breaker for people. And, um, you know, if, if they're not saying those things and you're asking them to maybe just consider that they're probably doing you a favor. One of my favorite things that I saw, I think it was on TikTok, honestly, was like, if you, if, don't comment on something or criticize somebody for something that they can't change in five minutes or less. Um, cause all it's going to do is hurt them. I mean, unless it's like a serious character flaw and you need to like have a talk with them, but like, you know, picking on somebody's appearance or anything like that. Um, like to, it's just, it's not helpful. And, uh, you're allowed to be attracted to who you're attracted to and not attracted to who you're not attracted to. That is totally understandable. It's biological. You can't really control it. But, um, just sometimes you don't have to hear it. They don't have to say it. And if they're doing you a favor by not saying it, take that. And, um, furthering on that, just if, if, I mean, that's obviously just one scenario, but like when the person, if they tell you that they don't know, or they're not sure if they see a future with you or something like that, if it's more ambivalent, sometimes they may have just not sorted out their feelings for themselves. And guess what? It's not your job to sort it out for them or walk them through it. All the only person that can sort that out is them. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's not up to you. It's not your job and it probably won't work. It'll be futile. Um, I mean, it's not every case, but I would just really encourage you guys that in the event that you get broken up with that when it happens that you listen to the person and you hear them for what they're saying, appreciate their honesty because it is hard, hard, hard work for people that have a soul to reject people. It, it often involves a lot of crying, a lot of conversation that is really difficult to have. It's vulnerable and it sucks and it can put a pit in your stomach. Um, but it has to be done. Uh, I mean, like with this guy, Adam, I was like, oof, I want to ghost him. <laughs> I just want to never talk to him again. I just want to block his number and be done with it. But I respect him too much and he deserves more than that. So I have been trying to slowly let him down and... Um, The other thing is, uh, I know that some people say that friends with your ex can work, and I guess in some cases it can, but in my experience, it always leads to contempt, (laughs) um, because somebody gets jealous, or somebody gets hurt, or somebody has, um, expectations that they're not necessarily aware of, like they're hoping you'll get back together with them, and, um, then they just get hurt in the end and end up hating you anyway, um, so I think in most cases, most cases, not all, most, that it's probably best just to, like, end cleanly and respectfully, thank them for everything that they've taught you, that they've given you, and um, understand that they're trying to do the right thing, usually, trying to do what's best for them, and we all have to be selfish. Um, You know, you can't just go around doing what's best for everyone else your whole life, um, because that's not really going to lead to a lot of personal satisfaction. So, um, appreciate that, respect them for that, Uh, Maybe even be proud of them for, um, you know, putting themselves um, in the priority seat. It's important and it's hard to do, especially when it involves hurting other people. Because it sucks. It really, really sucks to do. Um, And going through what I've gone through the past couple of months with, uh, you know, dating different people, um, I have a lot more empathy for Kyle, my ex. um, Because this is not easy. (laughs) And it breaks my heart. And so now I have a greater understanding of where he was coming from. Um, Does it justify keeping me on the line while he found somebody else to replace me? No. Um, And that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid, you know, in my new dating experiences is that, like, you know, if I'm not feeling it, I have to be straight up. I cannot lead people on. I refuse to do that. I refuse to waste their time. My time is important and it matters to me and uh, other people's time matters to me and I'm not here to waste it. So if I'm not feeling it, I've got to be up front and um, I, it's not easy to do um, because again, sometimes you lose more than so- like a potential mate. <laughs> you lose a friend, somebody that you care about, somebody th- to talk to every day. I mean, me and Adam have been talking extensively every single day for about three weeks now. Um, so losing that sucks. And, um, it's just, it's, it's going to take some getting used to, but in reality, we'll both be fine. We'll get over it and, uh, we'll find people that fit us better. Um, you know, I think that he and other people, you know, deserve somebody who is in it with them a hundred percent. Sometimes it can take people longer to get there. Um, but, I just don't feel it, and I think that's okay, and I'm trying really hard not to fault myself for it, because it's it's not my fault. I can't control how I feel about somebody, and I went into this one very hopeful and very excited about it, and um, it's just it just didn't work out like I wanted it to, and that's a harsh reality that we all got to face at some point or another, you know? Just because you want something doesn't mean it works, so... I don't know. I'm trying not to be too depressing, but I think it is important to pay attention to how breakups and relationships go down, especially the bad ones, so that you can avoid it. So I hope you guys are hearing me on some of the lessons I'm talking about, um, because it, it really does make the difference if you're willing to be open and communicate effectively and accept what people are saying. Um, I think it leads to a lot less heartache. Um, Yeah, uh, let me think if there's anything else that I really want to talk about. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I just, I also would like to say that, like, you know, if you're, if you are in a position where you're not really feeling somebody, uh, to have enough respect for them to 
call it off and just be like, look, I don't know, I'm not really where you're at. You deserve somebody who is, and I'm not willing to waste your time or be selfish. So, um, I wish you the best, you know? Um, and beyond that, like, if you're feeling like somebody is there with you right now, you can have a conversation with them. Just be like, look, I just want to check in with you, see where you're at, see if you're feeling us. And, um, you know, if you're not, we can talk about it and see if we can, you know, figure out what the problem is. And if there is no problem and you're just not really feeling it, we can go from there and, um, you know, respect their honesty. Um, I think that it's just, it's really easy to get wrapped up in the idea of having a pinpointable reason when often we're just too complicated and complex of beings for that. You know, humans are not simple. Love of of all feelings is so complex and confusing and has so many important factors that have to go just right um, for it to work. And I'm not somebody that falls in love easily. Um, I would say that out of all the people that I have been on dates with, all of the people that I have dated for uh, extended periods of time, um, you know, I've only been in love with one. And I bet you can guess which asshole it was. <laughs> um, it It's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, you know, do I wish it had worked? Of course I do. I wish that we had been able to, you know, like finish out and be happy together. But um, that's not how, it's not how it goes for everyone. And it sucks so bad because you have to find somebody who's willing to be in it with you forever But, um, now I wouldn't want to be with that person if they paid me a million dollars. I would say, no, thank you, sir. Uh, that's enough. I will find somebody else, you know? Um, and I think that's okay too. I think you're allowed to, um, you know, not really want to interact with somebody again. Um, especially if they kind of fuck you over like that. Um, but I think it's also like, I'm also at a point where I, I don't love that individual anymore, but, um, I do understand a bit where they came from and I can respect the efforts that they made to end the relationship and I can take responsibility for where I went wrong. Um, you know, they told me that they weren't into me and I was like, no, you are. (laughs) And I convinced them, guilt tripped them, talked them back into it, explained their past shit in a way that made sense. Um, and you know, I could have been right. Um, but also the, the stuff was just there, you know, um, the feeling wasn't anymore and that's okay. And especially in young relationships, it is so hard for people to accept that, um, you know, there will be other chicken men. You can find other people to fall in love with. And, um, I know that it's very hard because while there are plenty of fish in the sea, you want the stupid plankton that you have that doesn't want you at all. (laughs) And you are a big, wonderful shark and you need to find another shark who will love you back as maturely and intelligently as you do. Um, but it's, that's hard to do when you're involved with your stupid plankton. Um, but I couldn't think of any, like an urchin, maybe a sea urchin. Yes, that's an offensive term. Um, but that does seem to be what we go for. Um, I saw this really fun TikTok post that was like, um, you know, people tend to fall in love with assholes because they're rarely nice. So when they are, it feels more special and, uh, their validation means more since it doesn't come as often. Um, which is a a big deal. I don't know if you heard me on that, but I said, because it's infrequent you know, we assume that that correlates with importance, uh, but it doesn't. People can be frequently nice and, uh, you know, regularly nice people and, um, still mean as much, if not more. Um, you know, somebody who never says, I love you or is emotionally detached or treats you like shit, but every now and again, he buys me flowers. Like, fuck that dude. That's not, it's not love. It's not mature. It's somebody who's insecure and, um, probably narcissistic and, um, has some issues caring about other people and being considerate and having compassion. And, uh, that is something that I learned because I don't know if you guys know this, but empaths are drawn to narcissists. If you don't know what those two words mean, have a Google. Um, but I am an empath. I am somebody who feels, um, feels very strongly when people express emotions and, um, 
it, it sucks because then I feel people who um, are hurting and then I am drawn to them and then I want to change them and you can't. It's, it's always up to the other person to change and you think, you think you can convince them. You can't. You cannot. It is not your job. It is not your responsibility. It does not mean you're an asshole if you walk away from somebody who has problems. It just means that you don't have to deal with it. It is not your obligation. It is not your job you're fine. It's okay. You know? Um, and that's such a hard reality to accept, but, um, it is reality. The only people that can change, um, them, or the only people that can change someone is themselves. Um, it's not, it's not up to you. You can't do it. You cannot force somebody into changing. And if they, and if you do force them, then is it really authentic? Is that really what you want? You want somebody who just conforms to whatever you say? No, you want somebody who loves you for you and who wants to treat you well because they want to and vice versa. You want to treat someone well because you want to, not because you're trying to gain anything or you're trying to, you know, make them love you. I mean, sometimes that happens, but as a whole, you're not trying to manipulate people into being in love with you. And that's what I did. And um, as much as it sucks to admit that, I didn't realize it at the time. I just was doing everything I could to, you know, keep the guy I was in love with. And, um, it sucked. And everyone around me was like, yo, dude, this is futile. Like you, you have plenty of people that care about you and are here for you. You don't need this one person that, you know, isn't, isn't on your team. And, um, you know, a lot of the things that I live by now are when you turn the volume down, what is left when you turn out or turn down all of the um, all of the noise, all the talking, all the promises, all the words, all the affirmations. When you take all that away, what do they do? When they make promises, are they fulfilling them? Are they doing the things, you know, that you requested that they change? Are they doing the things that make you happy? Are they respecting your love language? Are they, you know, trying to show you how much you matter to them? Are you? Are you doing all of those things or no? It's very telling. And, um, you know, another problem, if you can't make a decision, that's your decision. You know, if you can't decide whether you want to be with somebody or not, that's your decision. You're either not ready to pick or you're not really in it. And it can be really confusing because there are lots of external factors that play into relationships and stuff. But it's just things to think about, like, you know, how in it are you? Are you showing it? Are you doing everything you can? And beyond that, every time a relation goes, a relationship goes sour, there are two people in that relationship. It is rarely ever the fault of only one person. And that's how I thought it was in my relationship with Kyle. I thought that he was just like, you know, doing the same thing to me that his ex did to him and was just repeating the cycle. And while to some extent he absolutely was, both I, his friends, and his therapist all agreed <laughs> that that was what was happening. Um, it, it doesn't really matter because it's still, it's still up to him. It's his journey. It's his decision. And, um, you know, it, I don't know. It just, it's not your job. It's not my job. And uh, there are people out there who will love you for who you are that are the type of person you want to be with. You just have to look. You have to be willing to try again. You have to be willing to be vulnerable, um, which is something that just is so difficult for me because homegirl do be dealing with some reactive attachment disorder, um, which essentially means I just have a problem with like touch and intimacy unless it's on my own terms, which means that nobody would ever initiate it except for me, which would in turn, make me not initiate it because I would be afraid of rejection. So it's this cute little cycle that has to go perfectly right for me to feel comfortable. And I'm aware of it, which makes it so much worse. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I don't know. It's, it's, we all have our things. We've all been through, you know, I mean, I say we all, but most people have been through somebody who's cheated on them, like throw a rock in a room of people and you'll hit 10 people that have been cheated on. And have had their hearts broken and have thought somebody was the one and it not work out. Um, I mean, that's happened to just about everyone and, um, it's very normal, but it's also very traumatic. It hurts and it sucks. And I think everybody can empathize with that. Um, I think what's important to remember is that, um, you know, how you were before the relationship, you know, you were willing, you were excited, you were happy, 
And um, those feelings are possible, again, in a different way. You know, it may never be the same, but do you really want to be the same your whole life? You know, your experiences make you who you are. They change and evolve just like you do. And it creates you into a person, for better or for worse. And when you do run into problems like I'm running into the reactive attachment problem, now it's just something that I get to work on and be conscious of and try to fix. And it will feel so rewarding when I'm able to work past that and cope better with it, you know? Um, So I think that it's important to take a look at all of the things that, um, you know, maybe you're not so happy with and um, take them as opportunities to learn and grow and better yourself to become the happiest, best version that you can. I mean, nobody ever really reaches that. We all just keep trying forever because it's all a cycle. It's not a line. You're not just ascending forever. Um, You know, we go through cycles of good times and bad times, and um, that's just just life. And uh, relationships can be the same way. Um, You just have to find somebody who's willing to be in it with you 100%. And um, that's what happened with Adam. I just didn't feel it 100%. We're also very far away from each other, like distance-wise. Geographically is the word for that. Um, (laughs) So uh, that also makes it super difficult to, like, try and work anything out. Um, So, I mean, I just don't want to waste his time and... um, you know, make it worse in the end, because if I'm feeling this way now, I don't really see it changing, um, you know, to perpetuate it and keep him on the line is just wasting his time. He could find somebody else or he could miss somebody else, you know, during that time. So I don't know. I think it's just the right thing to let people know where you're at. And, um, then after that, it's, I mean, obviously it's your responsibility how you handle it, but it's their responsibility on um, dealing with it. It's not your job to make them feel better or to stay with them, um, you know. Because, like, people, when they get hurt, um, they tend to self-deprecate and be like, I'm not, I'm never good enough. This happens to me so much. But, like, how hard is it to find somebody who matches up with you perfectly? It's very hard. So, I mean, you know rejection should be expected from both ends. Like I should expect it and he should expect it to some degree. Um, and, uh, it's very hard to find people that you're going to be compatible with forever. Some people get lucky and find it in high school, the first people they ever date. And some people, it takes a few years. And, um, I'm, I'm a very specific type of person, I think. Um, and I have specific needs and, um, I don't know. It's just really hard because I am not entirely sure what I'm looking for. And at this point, I think I'm going to start manifesting that um, by like sitting down and actually giving it some thought about what I want out of a relationship and, um, you know, what I'm looking for. Because here's another fun thing that our brain does. Um, If you only focus on negative things, um, A, manifest destiny, law of attraction, that's what you're going to bring into your life. But beyond that, your brain has a really hard time comprehending negatives. So if you say, I don't want X, Y, Z, that's all you can think about. It's like saying, don't think about elephants. The first thing that pops into your head is an elephant. So when you say, I don't want this in a person, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, that's all you're concentrating on. That's all you're going to notice. And that's all you're going to attract. And, um, that is something that is very, very hard for me because it's the, the negative stuff in life stands out more. Um, I just got done reading about that in my social psychology book. It's, it's a huge issue. We pay attention to it more because, you know, as a survival instinct, good stuff, don't really need to pay attention to it. It's the bad stuff that needs your attention. So you can either fix it or run away from it <laughs> or fight it, I guess. Um, but yeah, so um, I think that about covers it. I can't really think of anything else um, other than just like it is okay to be on your own. You don't need a partner um, to fulfill you. I know how badly, um, you know, it can suck because like I want somebody. I want a partner, somebody who completes me, somebody to do stuff with, somebody to love and be with. Um, but I don't need it. And um, coming to believe that is difficult, but, um, it has to happen before I can be with somebody. I think, you know, I just want to be comfortable with myself and my life and enjoying my horses and my cats and my podcast and my YouTube and my Instagram and my 
schoolwork and focusing on my future and really investing in myself. And um, then I can only hope that I will, you know, find the right person. Um, but I don't think forcing it with somebody that I'm not really feeling is the right call. I think that's unfair to them. Because who, who wants to be in a relationship with somebody who's like, yeah, I guess you'll do. Like, that sucks, you know? Or maybe I'll fall in love with you. I don't know. When they're like head over heels for you. You're like, ah, mm, that sucks. Like, I'm just not there. And nobody wants their love story to be like, mm, I didn't really like you that much at the beginning, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm too much of a hopeless romantic, but I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like I'm on the right track of figuring out what I want and where I'm at. And while also being respectful of other people and considering their thoughts, views, wants, needs, etc., etc., it's a very tricky, tricky thing to do, human love. Um, it's confusing, and it's messy, and it's scary, and it's complicated, and it's never, never how you expect it to go. Um, so with that, I want to leave you guys with please love yourself, take care of yourself, and um, focus on what you want, what's really important. It's okay to be selfish sometimes. Um, you know, this is your life. You can't live your life for other people or waiting on other people to change because it's never guaranteed. And, um, you know, you can't control everyone and that's okay. You can control you and you are in charge of your life and your destiny and life is what you make of it and other cliches. (laughs) So, um, just, just really listen to yourself, especially in this quarantine season, uh, when you're spending a lot of time alone, take some time to like maybe journal and reflect a little bit, think about what you want out of life and who you want to be and that sort of thing. And, um, value yourself, value that you're, you are worth it. You are allowed to have those things. And, um, you know, as long as it's not ridiculous, you can't have a dinosaur, but you can have meaningful reciprocated love and, um, you can give it, you're capable. So with that, I leave you. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe it made you think a little bit. Um, if you want to check me out on social media platforms, you can find me at Jet Equa Theory on all social media. Um, you can find this podcast at Jet Real Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. I also have a website, jetequatheory.com. Currently not super active on it at the moment, but it does exist. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much for listening and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Also just realized that see you guys next Tuesday is like cugunt. It's almost cunt. So you're welcome for that. See you next Tuesday. Ah. <laughs>